Um, okay, so I want to show you guys another, like, you know, yesterday we did the whole blue and, and yellow thing. And here's another um, example of a swatch I did. And um, I, I almost panicked because what I found in my studio was this. And I'm like, surely I labeled it on the back because I love these colors. Well, I looked on the back and there's nothing. And it's like, oh, no, what colors are these? I mean, I could guess. And then I looked a little bit more and I actually found it. So this was the, um, what I do is like, sometimes I'll do a small scrap sheet of paper and experiment with colors. And this one has three. This one has Cadra Deep, Payne's Gray and Transparent Earth Yellow. And then this little guy over here is just Cadmium Red uh, Deep plus Transparent Earth Yellow. So notice the word transparent, um, opaque, opaque, transparent. So some things to think about when you limit your palette would be like, okay, you know, one opaque and one transparent or one warm and one cool. Um, think about things like that because you're gonna get kind of more interesting if, if you just stick with opaque and you just stick with warm and you know all these things, it's kind of fun to mix things up. So that's the palette that I thought I would just quickly um, use right now to um, demo on a sheet of this, this four square arches oil paper. One of my favorite surfaces. And then um, this, I'm just going to mix this up now. Um, there's a bluish uh, tint to this. So notice I've got sort of a primary going blue, yellow, and red, but it's not your traditional primary because, you know, um, I could do that and I have done that, but I find these colors to be a lot more interesting. So I move this over here. Here's my four square. And um, this is typically what I do uh, in a workshop is do a demo on this surface. So one of my favorites, very easy to transport it. And I usually just, again, I'm going to just show you kind of what I did yesterday. This is my process. Doesn't mean it's going to be your process, but um, I do like to experiment with <clears throat> marks and, you know, how much of the marks end up staying in the end. But, but part of what I'm wanting, I want to show you now is that this is a series of four paintings, but I'm not thinking about it like that right now. I'm thinking about this as I'm forgetting that there's even any kind of separate, that this is four paintings and I'm thinking about it as if it's one. And that's kind of what you can do with the series. One time I, um, I had uh, six 36 by 36 inch panels and I just put them on the floor and, and I painted on the entire thing as if it was one. And then when I peel them apart, um, they were just so much more interesting than if I like said, okay, I'm working on a 36 by 36 inch painting and you know, it, it feels so limiting. And um, so just forget your borders are even there. That's one of the great things about um, a, this type of thing where you actually have them on one sheet of paper. And if you're working on a wall, you know, you just like you like I've taken four sheets of 22 by 30 arches and just tape them on the back and then tape them on the wall. And actually, I'm going to do that probably soon because I, I want more paintings that are like 22 by 30 inch size. I don't I'm kind of low. <laughs> On those right now and I haven't and I love working that way it's it's really fun so I'm just you know playing right now and this thing is like falling apart um so the first thing I might do is just like start to put some color down in various places like this and you know um it's a series so I kind of want these paintings to speak to one another and that's why um, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm saying, oh, there's only yellow in this one and there's only red in this one. I'm, I'm thinking about it more broadly. And as you experiment, this is just something that you'll maybe want to try as well. The question too, that sometimes people have is, well, you know, do I want to keep my colors independent? Do I want them to um, kind of stay the way they are or do I want them to mix and match or you know whatever so I mean you can just take a master meister for example and you know again everything you do at this stage is um, kind of experimental for me as well because like I haven't done this before not with these colors and not on not not in this way but you know what what do you like and I like geometry so right off the bat I'm getting a sense of geometry here just with this one tool, um, you can cover a lot of ground really fast. 
then you start to mix your colors. Um, here's a, a really beautiful dusty blue. You've got all these grays that you mixed yesterday and haven't had a chance to use yet because <laughs> you've been busy with your electricity going out and okay so um here's a beautiful like beige color with my red i haven't added red yet i love red and cadmium red deep it's amazing that the personality difference between cad red deep cad red medium and cad red light they <laughs> are so different from one another. I never would have thought that, but then I started to play around with it and yeah, they're different. Um, okay, how about a bird air? With a monoprint. So maybe there's this color here. It's kind of pretty and I can smush it around like this. That's a different way to move paint around. I'm going to get a different edge, but mostly what I'm doing is I'm just observing what's happening. So I'll peel it this way. Right now we're just experimenting here. So what don't I have? Um, I've got a lot of dark, got some mid-tone, and then the, the paper with graphite on it right now is kind of the lightest thing going on. So. I could add a little bit more light. These feel predominantly blue, partly because I took that blue and I, I made a, a tone of it. So this dots. And then what will these show up over? Well, they'll show up over dark. Show up over here. So again, I call this kind of cross-pollinating, like in order for your series to speak to one another, you know, they have similar things going on. And now we've got format, we've got color, shape, texture. There are a lot of similar things going on here. Yeah. Um, we can come back in with mark making at any time. So let's see, that's pretty intense. He was asking about the solid marker. Um, this is very, um, very dark, but if I, See, going into wet, it doesn't like that. Um, let's see what else. I can take and draw into the stick area. Now let's see, silicone to see if I can just pull these together rather quickly. Um, what I would do is take this and change the color because again, there's no reason to keep using the same old color when you've got all these. Okay, so white is very potent and I've got it here like right along my edge. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm closing up some of these little areas because it's just too much in the wrong place. Again, I can get a pretty hard rectilinear edge with this tool. That's what the silicone tools are good for. So even though I've got wet paint on here, I can kind of tell where the dry areas are. I have to say that it's really fun to watch your process. <laughs> I'm, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I do feel like a child, but, um, but I didn't always paint this way. I used to be really uptight and driven by like it has to be perfect and it drove me insane i stopped painting for 10 years <laughs> so um this is the new me it's really awesome to be able to maintain that childlike play 
to me, I think that's the most amazing thing about creating art is just to be playful with it and stop trying to be a perfectionist. I agree. And I, I agree with that so much. I love children's art. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is just set up something that has some sense of like what you're looking at here. So again, I can go into, I already did put some marks in there, but being a mark maker. Okay, so, okay, that's, I could go a lot further. Um, let me just, there's one area here. I'm just trying to get this to look somewhat, um, let's see here. Let's fill in this. Oops, I want that black line. It's a glob of paint here. I kind of like this um, beigey tone here, just different, and it's a good. Change, it's very neutral, it's warm. So I like to think about like when I'm when I'm painting, I I don't I don't criticize myself. I'm like, oh, that's warm and that's cool and that's rough and that's soft. And and if you kind of start to think in terms of just just describing what you see in front of yourself rather than beating yourself up, um, painting becomes so much more fun. Okay, so here. All right, well, I could go further. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to stop, and then I don't. But what I wanted to do was just show you how, um, let's see if I have one of these guys. <clears throat> so I cut these out of um, magic plastic because I, I just couldn't stand the, um, so I used to use blue tape all the time, and it's just so gross. And it'd be like, I'd be in a workshop and it'd be like, oh no. And then all my students would be like, oh no, looking at their own work. But I just want to show you that um, in a very short amount of time, you can um, create some compositions. It's just kind of fun. So th these mats are just cut out of plastic and they're reusable and you can wipe them off and all that good stuff. So that's, I just want to show you that Arches oil paper is one of my favorite surfaces. <clears throat> 